I'm Amanda Leitner, and welcome to Rochester Rising, where we amplify the stories of Rochester entrepreneurs. Welcome to episode 168 of the podcast today. So last week on the podcast, we took some time off. Uh, I think there was really just an overwhelming sense of COVID-19 and the community um, catching up and doing what needed to be done immediately. And that did not include putting out a podcast. I was actually editing a podcast that we had recorded a few weeks before, and it just seemed very silly um, to air that episode while while the community was in such crisis mode. So instead, we wanted to take the time to share some stories of how COVID-19 was impacting the entrepreneurial and small business community and what innovations have been created and the people that have stepped up to really fill immediate needs within the community. So last week, I had the really great pleasure to talk with two people in the community who were really stepping up to fill a need that they saw, Sean Archer and Tiffany Alexandria. Sean is the founder of Naughty Woodpecker, and this is a very new uh, store and handmade wood shop that's located in the Castle community, and he creates handmade jewelry, kitchenware, and furniture. Tiffany Alexandria is the owner of Choo Choo Kachu, which is a food site where she's a food blogger, photographer, and home chef, both best known for her Taiwanese recipes with locally sourced ingredients. So these two have set up, stepped up to do some real creative innovations in the community um, as volunteers with no one paying them, no one asking them to do it, no one telling them to do it. So Sean and Tiffany have started um, Rochester Marketplace, which is housed on Sean's Naughty Woodpecker page. And this is a website to help small businesses, makers, and artists in Rochester um, sell their goods in one space, which is very important during this time. Um, And it's really been rapidly, the offerings on the Rochester Marketplace have really been very rapidly growing um, to include in, to include products from craftsmen, artists, and services. And on Tiffany's website, Choo Choo Kachu, she also has a subpage called, called Rochester MN Food uh, because she saw a real gap in the community of understanding of what restaurants were open, how they had changed their, their schedule, their offerings, or how they were serving food. And she has this broken down into different subcategories, such as um, Asian, Mexican food, American style food, and even grocery stores. So both of these are being constantly updated um, with new products on the Rochester marketplace and um, updated business services and and restaurant offerings on the Rochester food page. And we'll have links to both of these in the show notes as well so that you can find them. So on the show today, we talked with Sean and Tiffany about the Rochester Marketplace and Rochester food pages, which they have created, um, why they saw a need for this in the community, and uh, best practices to support local businesses and other ways that they're seeing businesses be innovative during this time of crisis in our community. So we've also been doing as much coverage as we can of how COVID-19 is impacting our entrepreneurial ecosystem on our website. So be sure to check there as well at rochesterrising.org. You can find us as well on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our podcast. You can find really anywhere you can consume podcast content. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're also on Spotify and on YouTube. We have our own YouTube channel, so you can check us out at any of those locations. All right, so now on to today's podcast with Sean and Tiffany with Rochester Marketplace. And before we get started, I should say that we obviously, due to social distancing and the need to stop virus spread, we obviously did not do this podcast in person. We did it over Zoom video. So you'll obviously see a a change in the the audio quality that we usually like to have. So just to let you know, we did record this on Zoom video, which is a very fantastic way to communicate with people and be able to see them while they're talking with you. Um, But did not give the same quality of audio that it would be in studio. I'm sure there's ways to make this better, which we'll be um, exploring over the next couple of weeks, but I think it still gets the point across very clearly and a story that needs to be shared. All right, so now on to today's podcast. Maybe we can start talking about Rochester, the Rochester Marketplace. So 
you know, what was kind of the purpose and goal behind building this? Um, so I, I kind of see it as like a lot of the smaller makers in town, the local people and uh, artists and craftsmen, they're a little bit scattered. And so we we're always trying to come up with a way to bring everybody together so people can find them. They know where to look, a central place to get some attention. Um, and then when everything started changing, people started talking about supporting your local businesses recently. And uh, some people are saying, you know, they don't know where to look. So we just started <laughs> throwing some things together and people were jumping on board with that. It seems like it grew pretty quickly. I looked at it yesterday and you had maybe like 10 things. And now I feel like it's like closer to 35 <laughs> different things. It's, it's getting up there. I got a few more people coming in this weekend and a few more people interested. And every day or two, you know, the list just keeps growing a little bit longer. Yeah. So hopefully that awesome. keeps coming together. So how do businesses join the Rochester Marketplace? And what are you kind of looking for in the types of business that can join? Uh, they can join, they can contact me at uh, Naughty Woodpecker. Um, on the webpage, there's a little button just says join the marketplace and there's a little uh, form they can fill out all the details to get started. What kind of businesses? Um, local artists and craftsmen, mostly. Um, people that need some help with this stuff. Um, we talked about doing some business cards or things too, for all the other shops that could use some help too, but, um, whoever needs help mostly. <laughs> Cause we realize that a lot, there are a lot of, um, people who doesn't have the ability to set up an online store or just like, it's a lot of work. So, um, our, we want to minimize their work. So we are taking charge of, like setting up product, taking um, product photography, and then this uh, photography they can also use for their portfolio later in the day because it's professional photography, um, just to make everything look cohesive and help them out so they don't have to do all the work. That's pretty cool. I didn't realize you were going and doing the photography too. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a lot of work on your part. Um, uh, so, and I'll put a link when this like goes up, but... Um, where can people find the marketplace online? How do they, what should they search? Uh, so right now it's um, tied into my webpage. It's kwoodpecker.com slash roch market or OCH market. Um, do you want to talk about um, the restaurant site that you're doing too, Tiffany? Yeah. So I started the restaurant site also on my own Choo Choo Kachu page just because when all this started, I found it really hard to figure out who was open and who's not and what hours, how do I actually get it? Where's the menu? Um, there are resources online that just says like, these restaurants are open, but then you still have to click through like 30 links to find all the information. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to uh, start a website and share it with everybody else who might need it. And also I think this will help support local restaurants better if people can find information easier yeah so that got started <laughs> and it's still like growing updating every single day and their restaurant local restaurants still deciding whether they're going to stay open or close today like every day every moment every second just crazy yeah i know um yeah i actually and i think like <laughs> the general consumer doesn't even realize how and I think DoorDash is great for, you know, what it does and it provides income for other people as well. But I didn't realize how big of a cut they took so yep. <laughs> and got our food last night instead of like doing the DoorDash. So. Yeah. And I just felt like that's a very big piece that nobody realized or understand is that they do take a cut and it's actually a pretty big chunk. Um, <laughs> yeah. And like as a food maker, producer, like if I let somebody take 30%. I'd be making like $5 an hour. Yeah. So is that even like worth it? <laughs> yeah. It's not quite as bad as wholesale, but yeah, it's very mm -hmm. steep for, that's crazy. Um, yeah. You know, both of you are small business owners, supporters, um, but you know, you guys just stepped up and did this. So why did you want to, want to do this for the community? <laughs> We have some free time, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair. 
<laughs> um, yeah, we do got to do something with our time and might as well be something that helps everybody, you know, bring everyone together and hopefully we can keep things moving. Yeah. And I think we also understand the pain of all the work that goes into all of this. And like, I make food and I've done a lot of food stuff and I know how painful that is. If like people can't get, go come through the door, you can't get orders and you have a lot of overheads like rent and staff and food cost and all the things. And I just get really scared for all the businesses. So yeah, yeah absolutely. I don't think even think we're going to know the full impact for at least a couple of weeks or so of how this is going to be. Well, I guess like we talked in the beginning, how has all this kind of affected what, what you guys are doing? It seems like both of us are kind of busier than we would be normally, but do you guys still, how is that affecting your businesses and, and how you're operating? Oh, well, my little shop was just opened up a couple of weeks before this, starting to get some attention a little bit. And now that's shut down. So that definitely hurts. Um, kind of pushes everything back <laughs> I yeah. suppose yeah. and for me I don't know it really doesn't matter in a way just because I want to help other restaurants first and if these restaurants don't exist in Rochester then Rochester is kind of not very exciting so <laughs> yeah. I want them to survive and I want to not have to cook for myself every single day after this is over. So I think it's just something that I have to do. Yeah. It's just like crazy to think about like the big businesses will, I mean, they're still going to be hit, but they'll recover faster, but some of these smaller ones might not survive. I think it's realistic to say that some of them won't. So, you know, thinking about, you know, how do you support that? And, and um, so, yeah, so I guess along those lines, you know, we were talking about DoorDash and, you know, realizing how big of a cut that takes, but, you know, in your opinions, what are some best practices that consumers can do right now to kind of support what we have locally? I think if you can just try to spend some of that money, if you're like, if you're an employee and you're still getting paycheck, try to spend some of those money helping local artists, local crafters, local, just small business and um, food business. I think food is essential. Everybody has to eat instead of like raiding supermarkets right now, all our restaurants still have um, amount of food that's available for people to purchase. Do that. Cause you don't know if they're just going to close tomorrow and that's super scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a good point. Cause some of us are still getting a paycheck. So, you know, thinking about, and we're supposedly all getting a stimulus check in a few weeks. So that'll be a good way. I mean, that's still in a few weeks, supposedly. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, thinking about, you know, spending that locally. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people do spend it. They don't save it. <laughs> so <Right. laughs> we'll see. Um, I was looking at the, your earrings yesterday, so I'm probably going to make a purchase today. <laughs> square ones I really like them I looked at them before when you first set up and now I feel it's like the time um so yeah I think I've been seeing some really creative things popping up with the business community people completely changing business model too to meet needs like the little thistle for example I was um you know Don had emailed me yesterday and said basically they changed their whole business model from like packaging or bought canning a lot more beer where normally it's just like in the tap room. So, you know, yeah, you guys, sure. yeah it's, a t and I don't think people fully appreciate how big of a shift that is, <laughs> but what are you guys seeing in terms of creative things people are doing in the community? Like blue duck is, um, just offering takeout to go take and bake and they have, it's kind of like meal prep thing for people like meal to go and people can take it freeze it or just keep it in the fridge and take it out and bake like that kind of different model seems to be working pretty well for them restaurants are doing whatever they can to post their hours of what they're doing mm -hmm. <laughs> putting signs up all over their buildings trying their best to keep everybody updated yeah and i think i don't know where this is gonna go this is just really fresh idea that laura just had this morning actually she 
like just because transportation business is taking a big hit as well. They might get shut shut down anytime. They don't know yet. But she was thinking that maybe she would help out the restaurants and offer um, delivery service instead of ha- letting um, DoorDash or Grubhub take a big chunk. She can deliver them and at a lower rate and also help out like some restaurants who does who don't have those delivery services. So. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, I think now's the time we're going to see some interesting things more like, I just see a lot of businesses doing even like Facebook Live things at noon, like yoga and healing rhythms yeah. and music. And yeah, it's nice even to go back and listen to that when you like have the time. I listened to some of the healing rhythms yesterday and I was like surprised at how, well, not surprised. I mean, they know what they're doing, but just felt so a little bit of stress come off just like, <laughs> like, actually it works it works <laughs> so yeah I think there's just a lot of things popping up that um people being creative with their business model and, and stuff like that <clears throat> but yeah well thanks for kind of sharing what you guys are doing and like, doing what you're doing because it's you know your time and you know your support yeah, for sure. of the community but yeah no, I appreciate it. I appreciate you trying to do this on Zoom. So we'll see how the audio is. <laughs> it's not going to be works. horrible, but it's not going to be great either. <laughs> Thanks so much to Sean and Tiffany for sitting down to share their story. So again, you can find the Rochester Marketplace on the Naughty Woodpecker site at kwoodpecker.com and then navigate to the Roch Market subpage. And also on Tiffany's page, you can find um, more information at choochoocachoo.com and then navigate to the Roch MN Foods subpage. And we'll have these links in our show notes as well, so you can just click on them there to find them. I think it's very important to share these stories of impact that COVID-19 is having in the community. So if you know of a business or entrepreneur with a great story to tell or someone that's been very innovative, during this time and has really stepped up to help, let us know. Send us an email at rochesterrising at gmail.com. Thanks so much for tuning into the podcast today. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss a story of innovation and entrepreneurship coming out of Rochester, Minnesota. We'll see you here next week with a brand new episode.